here gathered in my name. I am there among them. So I guess they all stayed home thinking, well, let's see how he preaches this one up. Yeah, I didn't even realize he was there. <laughs> well, it's because just about every week I start off by saying, you know, if only two or three are gathered together, we know the Lord is with us. And so, you know, the, Paul and Peter, they're busy with different appointments and different things, but we're here. And so that's what counts. And uh, there we go. So our opening hymn, and it's a good thing we got a crowd singing for us, is. Well, then what am I telling you if you already know? Brother, sister, let me serve you. and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of your God. Amen. Now as we prepare our hearts to hear God's word, let us continue in prayer. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me light in your ways. Confirm your servant of promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See, I long for your precepts, and your righteousness give me life. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I shall have an answer to those who taught me, for I trust in your Lord. Lord. Do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For my hope is in your ordinances. A reading from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. 
And our gospel hymn for today is Lord, thy word abideth. with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be as to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks that your Son came to be with us and is with us whenever we ask, whenever we acknowledge his presence among us. We give thanks that he's here with us today. Bless the words of my mouth that they indeed be his words and his words alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have a lot of text here today. A lot of text with a lot of things that we can and should do. But some of these things are difficult. One thing is simple. It's to realize that Jesus Christ is with us. When we're alone, when we're with other people, when we call upon him, we should have this sense that Jesus is with us. We should feel that peace. It's not something easy. We don't always feel that peace, but yet we know through experience that somehow Jesus Christ is with us, comforting us and leading us and being with us. For as it says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And this word gathering 
It's the same word used when he's speaking parables about farming and collecting wheat. It's the same term used for fishing and gathering the fish. So as we gather together as, as family and as friends and as members of the church, in my name, he says, in other words, what he's known by, we gather together here, gather together as the church in the name of Jesus Christ and everything that Jesus Christ stands for. And then he is among us. And it's this word among. He's in our midst. So as we gather here today, we should feel that Jesus Christ is here. We don't physically see him. Well, mind you, in this chapel, he's everywhere. But these are statues. These are graven images, so to speak. I better be careful when I say these things. But we know that Jesus Christ is here in our spirit, in our heart, even during those difficult times. But when he is among us in our midst, it's also the term used for when he was with us in the midday and at the midnight hour. And those are important suggestions because there are times in our life where it's the midday, it's in a process of getting things done, and sometimes it's in that final moment when we think that everything is about to defeat us, and it's that final hour. Of late, different people that I've been speaking with who have been going through difficult times, and yet when I go on the internet and I check out the hymns that Joyce has selected, there's a whole pile of videos on the right-hand side, and one was about the crossing, how during the American Revolution, they knew that they had to cross a river to become American citizens, that they had to cross this river to defeat what they saw as the enemy. And everybody was against this one general, but he stood up to them. He knew that he would have to go at that midnight hour. And of course, the great speech of Winston Churchill, the final hour, where everybody said, you're wasting your time. But he knew that he had to do it, he had to succeed. And it's at these moments in our lives, the midday, the midnight hour, when we can believe that Jesus Christ is indeed in our midst. And of course, this begins with people who are perhaps causing us grief. And perhaps they're not even causing us grief, but they're offending other people. And we see that often where things are done or things are not done that are hurting other people. It doesn't touch us personally, but it's offending other people. And we are called to go and make this right. Well, sometimes we get in trouble when we go to make things right, don't we? And that's where sometimes it's good to take a buddy along with you, or two buddies, and especially if they're tall and they're big. <laughs> Just to say, listen. Listen what God's message is for you. Because even this text where it says, but if they are not listening, take one or two along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. That you need somebody on your side. And Jesus is speaking the word from Deuteronomy. It's already the law, it's already the word that is saying, you are not in this alone. Not only do we know that Jesus is among us, but they are giving us the rules and the regulations from Deuteronomy, the law, to how we go about this. And it also gives us this way out that at some point, they may not listen. They may not be ready to take what we're having to tell them today. And so we treat them as a Gentile or a tax collector. Well, how do you treat somebody like a Gentile or a tax collector? Well, if we are people of God, anybody who are not people of God are considered Gentiles. The particular word is somebody who is not an Israelite. They're not of our particular faith. And a tax collector, well, they weren't enjoyed by anybody because they had this special position of collecting taxes for Rome. And very often they take a little bit extra. And so all you could do was pray for them. But as we learn from Romans, that sometimes we need to take care of people and we need to rejoice with those who are rejoicing, weep with those who are weeping, those who are hungry, we feed them. And who knows if in all of this, this evil will be overcome with our good because we have been made sentinels. Each and every one of us here have been made sentinels as it speaks about in Ezekiel. That we are called, and it says this repeatedly, warn the wicked to turn from their ways. Warn the wicked to turn from their ways. It says it time and time again, again, in verse uh, 11. 
Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. This is a hard message. This is certainly not something you could read at the supper table because most people wouldn't understand it. But in all of this is saying that we are called to speak to those, to tell them about Jesus Christ. We are called to those to speak about Jesus Christ when they are going through a difficult time. That as they're hungry for some kind of a nourishment, we can give them this nourishment. Some of them will listen and some of them won't. But as it says here, that if we are called as sentinels to speak to people, to speak to them about Jesus Christ, it's not up to us whether they say yes or no, it is up to us to tell the story. If we don't tell the story, then it becomes our problem again, because their demise will be accounted to us rather than to them. And some people say, well, that doesn't make sense and that's not gonna happen. But even in life, that if you see something about to happen and you do not notify the person about it, or you do not make some kind of a correction and yet you knew about it, you could be charged with that ill. And so we are called at this time more than ever to gather as one or two or three, to read the word of God, and then to take that word of God to other people. And it's frustrating because they won't all listen and they won't all do. But at that point, we leave it up to the Lord. And it was Paul who says, and this is this whole question of binding on earth and bounding in heaven. And now Paul says, and now behold, I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. So we are bound and we bind everything in the spirit, not always knowing the outcome, except knowing that we are walking in God's will. And that's the important thing, walking in God's will. Amen. And now we recite my favorite affirmation of faith, the one we seem to do all the time, the Hear, O Israel. So let us confess our faith as we say, Hear, Hear O Israel, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us bow our hearts in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, again we give thanks for your word. We give thanks for your presence. We give thanks for the Holy Spirit that surrounds us and holds us and guides us and leads us and brings comfort to us. Allow us to take that Holy Spirit with us as we guide and direct and instruct and nurture other people the word of god lord in your mercy hear our prayer we continue to pray for everybody here who is especially in need of a healing touch the peace and tranquility that comes from knowing you and putting our total faith and trust in you lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for the many who could not be here today for one reason or another that somehow the holy spirit will envelop them and give them hope for a better tomorrow that those who are in need will somehow meet people that they can speak with and talk with lord in your mercy hear our prayer and we continue to play pray for this establishment and all of the employees who have been called into this vocation to care for one another to care for the residents of this place that the upper management will look upon them and take care of their employees so that they can, can take care of the residents Somehow, Lord, be with them that your Holy Spirit would bind this place into a place of love or nurturing where they feed the hungry and they nurture the thirsty and that they care truly for one for the other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So today as we gather, two or three together, in your name, in your being, we put everything into your hands, O oh Lord, and we ask you to continue to guide us in our faith and our love and our hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all who truly and earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Most merciful God, 
we acknowledge and lament our many sins and offenses, which we have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. We are deeply sorry for these our transgressions. Have mercy upon us, merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may more serve and please you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent with true faith, turn to him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to an eternal, everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with, with you. you. And our offertory hymn for today is As We Gather at Your Table. Holy name, 
evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, who is heaven in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, merciful Father, not as we ought, but as we are able. Because in your tender love you gave the world your only Son, in order that the world might be saved through him. He made you known by taking the form of a servant, healing the sick, liberating the oppressed, and reaching out to the lost. Betrayed, reviled, and nailed to the cross, he confronted the power of sin and disarmed it forever. In his offering of himself, he became the perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Redeemed by Christ, we have been adopted as your children. By your pardon, you have made us worthy to praise you. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus had supper with his friends, took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to them, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In obedience to him, with grateful hearts, we approach our holy table, remembering our Savior's sacrifice and rejoicing in his victory. Confident in his sovereign purpose, we declare our faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit on us as we receive this bread and this cup. As we partake of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. May we be renewed in his risen life, filled with love and strengthened in our wisdom to serve others. In the make of our lives, we pray, a pure and holy sacrifice, accepted to you, knitting us together in one in your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as Jesus taught, we are humble to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, 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 and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, we be many in our one body, for we all, all share in the one bread. The gifts of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Father, your word and sacrament give us food and life. May we who have shared in holy things bear fruit to your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And glory to God. Whose power working in us can and with him 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 more, more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation. In the church and in Christ Jesus. Forever and ever. Amen. God, Creator, with the Holy Spirit, as we gather together in prayer for those who have offended, allow us to reach out with them, knowing that when two or three are gathered together, there, Lord, you will be there. Give us the courage to speak, not only in things of the world, but in faith. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And our closing hymn for today is Forgive Our Sins as We Forgive. service. We'll be back again with you on Wednesday, August the 28th, again at 2.30, and I would encourage you to take some of the extra bulletins and forget them somewhere. Or perhaps some of the people that are normally here and couldn't stick them on their door, slide them underneath, or even knock on their door, or bring them to supper time and leave them and leave that little message for those who would have liked to have been here but couldn't because this is an important ministry that we're doing for the people of this place so yes. again. And I really thank and appreciate you all for being here. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank, thank you be to God. God.